morning guys H how are you all hope everyone's okay hope you're all keeping really well um if you're anything like me then you might have found this week a little bit more tough um because on from last week we're a whole nother week into not necessarily being able to see the ones that we love and do all the things that we normally love to do um and having to find new ways to keep ourselves healthy physically and mentally um so um yeah i found it a bit more tough this week um but one thing that's kept me going is crochet and how many of you guys have been um sort of following along with all of the little live sessions that i've been doing just showing you new little bits and bobs um so yeah that's been amazing um the video live that we did last weekend at this time last sunday showing um how to do a basic granny square had so many views and has continued to do so it's been viewed over uh, something like fifty eight thousand times um by and i've had so many messages from people saying how much it's helped them and how they've tried to crochet before but they've they've got it now finally and sending me all these wonderful pictures of lots of rainbow granny squares so that has been incredible that's absolutely been um alongside sort of spending more time with my two little ones um that has been the highlight of my week absolutely and this time um in indoors the highlight has been that um you know so many people have been enjoying getting their hands on hooking yarn and just creating um so it's really really exciting for me so um for I, i'm hoping that anybody who did um last week's um granny square for the first time um should be able to follow along with this um i might not go quite as slow hoping that now that those people have done a few granny squares they might um might be feeling a little bit more confident but at the same time as always it's okay um we all pick things up at different rates so if you don't keep up with it you can always um replay the video again afterwards um so um but yeah so i'll still do my best to make it so that you guys can crochet along with me um and yeah that's what we're gonna do today so hopefully this will be another little something to keep your mind off of all the other crazy stuff that's going on at the moment um something to focus your mind a little mindful activity um in case you're stressed about anything or worried or just want to be creative really um so yeah without um further ado let's crack on i shared just a moment ago <clears throat> on the on this event the pattern for this rainbow um which you might want to have to hand printed or just beside you um i've got mine on my laptop there because i've run out of ink in my printer um, but if you don't have it there, then it's it's okay. So I'll still be able to explain all the steps to you. And then you've got the pattern there for afterwards if you want it. Um, so let's crack on and make some pretty rainbows. So I've got my little examples here. So we've got this one with some pom-poms. And we've got this one with some tassels. So we're going to have a little look at both of those. Um, and because I like to um, make things um, different and kind of play around with colour and stuff like that, I was trying to choose some colours today that were <clears throat> a little bit different to the two that I'd already done, um, but so not exactly the same. And I, I just couldn't kind of work out colours that were going to work well for me. So I've decided to do one slightly different today colour-wise, so I'll show you it now. Um, so let's have a little look if we can get this in the right position for you. Okay. So I hope we can all see okay today. I've got the blind shut at the moment because the sun's shining today. Um, so um, but if it goes a bit overcast, then I'll open the blind so we've got a bit more light on the subject. Um, so as I mentioned, I'm going to do mine slightly differently today. So I'm going to do mine with alternating this rainbow stuff and white so it's going to be stripes of that and that but you might have chosen six colors 
one, two, three, four, five, six for your little rainbow. Or you might just pick up whatever you've got to hand and just go with it and create whatever, see what happens, see what comes out. Um, so if I was to do, start with white, rainbow, white, rainbow, white, rainbow. Yeah, so I'm gonna start with white because I want the outer one to be rainbow. Um, so, What we're going to start off with is um, a magic circle. So for anybody who doesn't um, know how to do a magic circle, <clears throat> I'm going to do a little demo. Um, I'm going to do two demos. And once I've done that, I'm going to give another little option for anyone who hasn't picked up the magic circle yet um, to do as a different, um, a different option for starting off um, because if you've not done a magic circle before and I show you it now twice it might be that it's quite often the sort of thing you want to have a little play around with before you get to the point where you're happy with it so if you don't pick it up from my two little demos now then you can always go back and have a look at it again a bit later on and I'll give you another alternative to start off with which you'll definitely be able to do okay so to do a magic circle we're going to wrap the yarn around and cross it over the back the same as we do when we're putting a slip knot on our hook so we've got our tail end in our hand i'm going to wrap that around and make sure that it goes behind so so there's the strand that's already on my fingers this one needs to go the other side of it so that you can go underneath pick that up and now at this point we'd normally take our fingers out and pull it tight for a slip knot but instead, we're gonna hold it and do a little chain, and that's our magic circle. So now all of our stitches are gonna go along there, and then once we've um, finished the stitches from our first row, we can pull it tight and it will close up really, really tight. Okay, so I'm gonna give you one more demo of the magic circle, and then I'm gonna give you an example of how to do it um, without the magic circle for anybody who's not picked it up yet. Okay, so magic circle, wrap that around your fingers, make sure that the second wrap goes behind this front one, put your hook underneath, hook that through to the front, and instead of taking your hands out and pulling it tight like a slip knot, you want to take your fingers out and keep it loose, yarn over with your working yarn, and pull it through the loop that's on your hook for a little chain, and that little chain stitch just secures it in place, and then you can start placing your stitches along it. For anyone who um, hasn't picked up the magic circle and is not happy with it um, and wants to come back to it later, you can also start off your rainbow like this. So we're going to do a chain of two, so slip knot on your hook, chain of four, so one, two, three, four, okay. So once you've got your chain of four, then you can treble into the first chain that you did. So the fourth one away from your hook, do your trebles into there. So for the first round of this rainbow, we want five trebles into a magic circle. So you do your magic circle, you chain three, and then you need five trebles into the magic circle. But if you can't do the magic circle, then you do a chain of four and treble into the first chain on your hook which is down here and then so I've done one treble in there and then do the next one two three so one two three four five all into that same first chain so that's what you'll have if you've done it that way, with the um, just putting all your stitches into the first chain on your that you did, and if you do magic circle way, then I'm gonna you're gonna get another demo now of the magic circle because I'm gonna do mine that way. So you're on around there, pop that under there and hook it through to the front. Take my fingers out, get the working yarn, do a little chain which keeps it in place. And now we're gonna do a chain of three. So one, 
in fact I've already got a chain there so two so I did a chain to secure it so another two chains um, and then you want your five trebles into the magic circle so yarn over so the same trebles we're using the same stitch as we learned last week on our um, granny square which I gave really slow demos over and over with so if anyone's watching and you're not sure about your trebles um, then you can always go back and watch my um, video from last week um, I've got a YouTube channel now which is on there so the YouTube channel is just called Ray's Room um, and all of the videos that I've done all the tutorials that I've done this week are on there um, so if you wanted to watch the um, granny square one again where I do all the trebles really really slowly um, then you can um, you can go back and have a little look at that so um, I've done a chain of three and then one two three four five trebles okay so that's our round one so now we just need to pull our magic circle tight so if you've crocheted along both the circle and the strand of your magic circle then you should be able to pull that tight and it closes it up for you like this okay right so now our pattern tells us to pull the magic circle close which we've just done and fasten off so to fasten off we just want to cut our yarn about there hook that pull it through and pull that tight okay so that's the first little hump of our rainbow so if you're doing like classic rainbow colors that might be like a blue or a purple but it could be any color at all so next I'm going to move on to row two. So in the next rainbow colour that you want to use, you need to get a slip knot on your hook. Like so. Again, that's something that I do really slowly on my previous videos if you want to go over that again. So we've got our round one and we've got for our next colour our um, slip knot on our hook. And we need to slip stitch into the top of chain three. So that first chain three from the first round, we want to slip stitch into the top of there. So going into just into the top of the chain, the third chain. Let's get that out of the way. Okay, so I'm slip stitching in there like that. So pull that through that loop that's on your hook. So that's your slip stitch. And then from there, you need a chain of three. One, two, three. And now, in that same place that we've just done our chain of three from, we also want to put a treble. So I'm going to yarn over and go back into the top of that chain of three for a treble, like that. And then you need to do an increase in each stitch to the end. And an increase is two stitches in the same place. So, so when we talk about an increase in crochet, it generally means two stitches in one stitch from the row below. So there's one in that stitch, and then I'm gonna put another one in that same place. So I'll just show you that again close up. So my next stitch along is this one here. So I'm going to do two trebles in that same place. So there's one. And two. Okay. And then the same again. One. Two. This yarn that I'm using splits really easily, which is a bit annoying, but... I just love the colours and I love the finish that it gives. So I do use it an awful lot with my sort of like crafty, sort of amigurumi style crochet. Um, but yeah, it does split quite easily. Um, so, and for anybody who's wondering what it is, um, the yarn that I'm using for this particular project is not your classic sort of like acrylic double knit sort of thing. It's the same thickness, so it'd be classed as double knit. But this one is... Um, a acrylic it's it's made to look like cotton so it's a cotton look acrylic um and then i've also got a bag of 100 percent cottons as well that i like to use but i have more colors in this 
this range so I, I decided to use this for it but there's quite a few different brands that do it it's got a shinyish sort of like a slightly shinier sort of finish to it it's not got a woolly finish to it um and there's quite a few different brands that do it um so there's patterns there's mariners and it generally tends to be called something like smooth or smoothie um but yeah i've got a whole kind of bag of here's the mariners label for it smooth touch they call it patterns used to call it um i don't know if they still do it because i've been buying mariners for such a long time um they used to call it smoothie um, and then there are other brands that do it as well. And quite often there are quite similar shades as well that they do it in. So I've seen this one in a few different um, makes, but it's, it's exactly the same thing. Um, so yeah, so you'd be looking up um, Mariner Smooth Touch or Pattern Smoothie, um, and that would um, give you some results that were the same sort of thing as this. Um, and if um, if anybody wants me to, I can see if I can find it later on and maybe share the link to it for wherever I find it. Um, okay, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. In our last stitch at the end here, we're going to do another two, which brings us to 12. And that is the end of that round. So if you are looking through the pattern, you'll see that at the end of round two, there's a number 12 in brackets. And that means that this round needs to finish on 12, which it does. And that includes the chain three that we did at the start. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. So we're going to fasten that off. Okay. So there's that one. So the next one, I'm going to do a white row, and this is row three that we're on now. The only thing with this sort of yarn, like cotton or cotton look, is that I find that it doesn't make good pom-poms. So for this one, I've used normal sort of like double knit for my pom-poms, but it does make good tassels, so I used it for the tassels on this one. Right, okay, so we've got our um, hook and um, we've got a slip knot on it for row three. So, so each row, row is going to start the same. So you want to put a slip knot on your hook for row three. And for row three, we need to slip stitch into the top of chain three again. So the chain three at the beginning of the last row, we need to get a slip stitch in there. So this bit can be a bit fiddly getting into the top of our chain of three, but I generally use my fingers to help me through. There we go. We're in. So slip stitch into the top of there like we did on the last round and then chain three, one, two, three. Okay, so next we want to, on row three, um, chain three in the top of row two and then um, treble in the same place. So in there, one, got one in there. And then the next thing we need to do on row three so we want to treble in the same place, which we've just done. And now we want to do a one. So one treble on its own and then an increase in the next. So in that stitch next to it, one on its own. Okay, so, so you've got your chain three in there and a treble. Then moving on to the next stitch, you've just got one in there on its own. Then in the next stitch, we need an increase. So there's two, one, two. And then we need to repeat that five times. So that's one. So one treble in there and two in there. One, two. One in there. And then another increase. One, two. Oh, I've got a little knot in my yarn there, never mind. And then one on its own in the next. One. And then two in the next. One. Two. So 
So we've got um, one, two, three, four. We need to do that again for so that we've done that repeat five times. So one on its own and then an increase like that. And then to finish row three, we want an increase. So we're increasing in this last one as well. So one, two. And then we're gonna fasten off. Pop through there, okay. So that's row three done. Row four, get your next color. Get yourself a slip knot on your hook. Okay, so next up we need to look at row four on the pattern, which is to slip stitch into the top of um, the chain three from the previous row and do a chain of three. So there's my slip stitch and then my chain of three, one, two, three. What does it say to do next? Um, chain three and then increase. So I've done a chain three in there. So now we're going to go along to the next um, stitch and do an increase in there. Oops, split the yarn again. So one, two. Okay, so we've got our chain of three in the first, um, in the top of that chain of three, and then along to the next stitch, you want an increase, so there's two. Okay, so if anybody's struggling to keep up, don't panic, it's absolutely fine. Um, I'll be saving the video afterwards so you can watch it back again after. Um, so yeah, so we've gotten to um, the start of row four where we've done a chain of three in there and then we've got um, an increase in the next stitch along. And then we're going to do one treble and then an increase. And we need to repeat that eight times. So one and then an increase. And then one. And then an increase. And then one. And an increase. And we're just going to repeat that to the end. So we have to repeat that eight times and then we should finish off with an increase. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. and then an increase. Eight. 
and that should finish us up with 28. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think I've just counted one too many. Okay, just double checking. I'm not gonna count out loud because if you're trying to count your stitches as well, then that's just a nightmare. So I'm gonna count quietly and you have a little count as well, see what you get to. Okay, so yeah, I definitely got to 29 then, but I've put 28 on the pattern. So we can come back, I'll have a little look at that in a bit to confirm exactly what it should finish on. But if we finish on um, a, oh, hang on, I know what to do. I'll just look at my other ones. Just work out whether it was a typo or. So, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yeah, so that should finish the last, um, this should finish on a, just a treble on its own, like this. So I'm going to change the pattern now, so I'll share a fresh copy of the pattern in a minute, once I've finished. Um, so I'll share it to this event for you guys. Um, but if you've already printed it off, then just annotate that at the end of row four, where it says um, repeat um, eight times, the next instruction there, cross out the word increase and just write treble and then fasten off. And then you should have 28. There we go. Right. So there is our four rows of rainbow. So let's get our last two rows done. Right, so slip knot on your hook again in your next colour. And then for row five, we want to um, put our um, slip stitch into the top of there, of that chain three from the row below, as we have done in each of these rows. Let me pull that loop a bit tighter. Right, sorry. Okay. So one, two, Oh, I'm crocheting with the tail end. Let's come back out of there. It's because I'm trying to watch what I'm doing through my phone and I can't really see it properly through there. Okay, right, let's try again. Okay. There we go. So I'm going to hook that through, pull it through the loop that's on the hook, and then we're going to go one, two, three, like we have done at the start of each row. The start of this one, once we've done our um, chain three, we want to increase in the next stitch along. So one, two and now we want to do two trebles separately and then an increase so one two separate then an increase which is two in the same place one two Okay, so once we've done that, we want to repeat that eight times. Uh, 
Okay. So one, two individuals, and then an increase. And then we've got another one, two individuals, and then an increase. One, two, and then increase. One, two, oops, did those both in the same place? And then an increase. One, two, increase. And then when we get to the end, we want to do one treble and then an increase. So one on its own. So once you get to the end of your sequence of individual, individual, and then increase. So we've repeated that all the way to the end where we'll then have space to do one treble on its own and then an increase in the last hole. Okay. There we have our rainbow so far. And now we just need row six. And row six starts the same. Um, so we're going to put a slip knot on our hook and um, we're going to chain three in the top of the chain three from the previous row. Um, and then we're just going to do one treble in each stitch to the end. So this is an even round. Sorry, I'm a bit fidgety because I'm sat on the floor and my legs keep going dead. Um, so fasten off that round that we've just done. Like that. And then we're going to get our last colour in our rainbow, slip knot on the hook, we're going to put our hook into the top of chain three, so one, two, three, there we go, so we're in, don't want to crochet with the tail end again, so we'll get that one out of the way. Okay, so slip knot that through, uh, slip stitch it through, and then chain one, two, three. And then we're just going to do one in each stitch around. So one in the next, one in the next, and keep on going all the way to the end.
So we're just doing one stitch in each stitch along. Oops. Ah, now they are. Okay, so we're doing one in each to the end. I'm just going to kind of speed on to the end, but it doesn't matter if you don't keep up because you can carry on going um, as I carry on waffling at the end. I'm going to start looking at our tassels and our pom-poms and stuff in a minute, but just take your time to the end. Just one treble in each stitch along. And don't forget, if you are feeling a bit behind on the rows, then it doesn't matter because you can just come back and watch it again in a minute. And you've got the pattern as well. Okay. Cut that one off. Fasten off. And there we have it. Our little rainbow. Now at this point, if you wanted to, I didn't do that, this with these two, so it's not entirely necessary, but if you wanted to at this point, you could kind of block it a bit on your ironing board and just put a bit of heat on it um, with a tea towel over the top just to press it. But I didn't do that with these and they sit nice and flatly, flat on the window anyway. So, um, so yeah, that works fine. Okay, so let's quickly get our little, um, our little, um, what am I thinking of? Loop on the top. So this little loop here so that you can hang it. Um, all we need to do for that is so the thing using the same color that you've used for your um last row of your rainbow um you're just going to get a slip knot on your hook again like this and you're going to um, slip stitch into the 19th stitch of the last row. So one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 19. So number 19 is about the middle and we're going to chain, slip stitch into there. Okay, and then you're going to do a chain of six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then you're going to slip stitch back into the into the next stitch along, so into number 20 or thereabouts. So slip stitch, fasten off. And that just creates that little loop for you. Okay. Right, so now if you wanted to add um, some tassels, like to this one, it might be nice to do um, rainbow tassel, white tassel, rainbow tassel, so it just kind of extends the colours in tassel form. On these ones, I quite like using white against rainbow colours, um, so because I love the stark contrast. Um, but you could use white or grey here for like your, your clouds. Um, or you could use the same colours and extend them. You could do, you could use anything. So it's entirely up to you what you want to create. Um, 
but yeah, so if you want to do tassels like this, in whatever colour you decide to do them in. Um, now I haven't mentioned about sewing in the ends yet, because you might be able to incorporate your ends in the tassels. I think with these ones, I, I sewed all my ends in, and then I did my tassels and my pom-poms. Um, but yeah, so that's up to you. So sewing your ends in the same sort of way that we looked at sewing our ends in on... Um, on the previous videos for um, like your granny square and that kind of thing. So we'd sew those ends in, but I'm always, I'm not a big fan of sewing in ends. So I always look for ways in which I can use the ends or hide them in other places so that I don't have to sew them in. So um, we'll see about that now. Right, so if I was gonna add tassels to this one, like this, so to get this tassel um, effect, I'm gonna use some of my rainbow color, for my first one. Um, and you need to get a, a length, which is like double the length of what you want your tassel to be. So if we were to say about that long, and then I'm gonna do one, two, three. So I've got there four strands. They're kind of like folded like that, we're gonna cut that off now. And then, this is gonna be our tassel. So at the moment it's double the length that we want our tassel to be. We're gonna fold it in half so that you've got this. And this loop, you're gonna post through the hole in between the last two stitches. So, so if we pull it through like that, sorry, I keep going out of focus. So you've got this loop now. I might try and incorporate that in, that tail end. So we've got this loop that we've posted through, and now if you grab your other ends, you just post them through that loop and then pull it tight. And that's how it looks from the front. So if you post it through the other way, then it looks like this. So whichever you whichever effect you want on the front. So I like this bit to be on the front and that on the back. But if you want it to be the other way around, you just post it through the other way. So I kind of put my hook through from behind and hooked it through that way. And then that's how you'll get that on the front. So you would do that all the way along. So next I would do it in white with this one and alternate all the way. And then once you've got all your tail ends, uh, all your tassels on in place, you would just trim the end. So you can either just cut through your loops like that, but you might want them to be neatly finished. So you want a nice sharp pair of scissors for that job. And trim them all like that. So you would do that all the way along. So just repeat that. And like, as I mentioned there, I when I posted my tassel through, I incorporated the tail end into the tassel, so I pulled it through the loop. So now I don't have to sew the tail ends in on that, um, which is awesome because I'm not a big fan of sewing in tail ends. Whereas if I'd done that on this one, then you'd have a piece of the red showing or a piece of the orange, whichever bit it was. But because on this one, I'm doing my tassels in the same color as the stripes, then it just gets hidden in the tassel. So that's that one. And then we're also gonna have a quick look at pom-poms. So on this one, I did, um, so this is my little pastel -y rainbow, and I chose to do pom-poms on this one. I find that these sort of cotton yarns don't make very good pom-poms. You want something a bit more woolly and fluffy. And so for that purpose, I used normal um, sort of acrylic double net. Um, in my set of pom-pom makers, so if you've got pom-pom makers, brilliant. Um, you can get these sets which have got these little pom-pom makers in them 
and um you can get them online sort of like you know just any sort of like online stores um that do this kind of thing um if you can try and support independent, then brilliant. So see what little like local places are doing online um, now that they can't open properly. Um, so you would use this if you've got it, which is brilliant. So before I had a set of pom-pom makers in my life, I used to use the old method of two rings of cardboard together. Um, and that if anybody, anybody who's done that will know that that can take a really long time to get through the middle and back out again and wrap it round and get it nice and full. Whereas with these, because they open, you can just wrap it round really quickly and then you close them and whiz round it. Um, so that's what I used for those pom-poms. So that's the smallest that I had in my set. But so that it wasn't all the same size pom-poms all the way along, so it was a bit more like like clouds I wanted some smaller ones as well so I'm going to show you a way to do a smaller pom-pom now which can be quite a nice way to trim blankets or you know you can use it for anything um, but you can either do it around a fork or you can even just do it around your hands and the bit the more fingers that you go around the bigger your pom-pom will be so I did these ones just around two fingers like this and I didn't do it too tight because if you do it really tight then it's hard to get it off um, but go round, I don't know how many times exactly, but if you go quite a few times, so you've got, I'll show you how much chunk there is there. Right, so this is how much chunk I've got, okay, on my hands. And then I'm gonna cut it off, just there. And then I'm gonna get a length of this. Now, lots of people have got lots of different ways for making pom-poms, so you might not even need this information, you might already have your own way of doing it. Um, so now I'm going to wrap that around, so if you can get it through your fingers, so hook it through with your hook if you can, and then we want to tie that tight, as tight as we can. So it can be a bit fiddly at this stage when it's around your fingers because you've only got one hand to work with. Um, grab hold of that one right and then if we can get it off our fingers at this stage then this can be a good point to really pull it tight get that end out of the way pull that tight and then I would do a double knot just there And then I would also just separate those two edges out a bit. I would go round again. So it's kind of got double the amount of yarn going around the middle for security. You can never be too strict on security when it comes to pom-poms. <laughs> okay, right. So we've got our pom-pom. That doesn't look like a pom-pom, you say, but all you need now is a really lovely sharp pair of scissors and you're going to go along your loops okay so if you then keep hold of your tail end because you're going to use that to tie it on this is the exciting bit where you get to fluff up your pom-pom so give it a good old fluff are we fluffing our pom-poms? Right, okay. So when it looks like this, this is now a chance to use a really, it's a really satisfying part of it for me. You need good scissors, nice sharp scissors, and then you can have a really good trim up of your pom-pom, get it nice and round. You could make it smaller at this point if you wanted to. So yeah, I would have made these, I, get, I gave them a really good trim when I did those two around my fingers um, to make them into little tiny balls. But if you use a fork, then um, you get a slightly smaller pom-pom as well. You can do it around the top of a fork. Um, so there we go. And then to fix these ones on, all I do is... Where's my new rainbow gone? There he is. 
um, I thread the yarn through the same point, so like through in between the stitches, just here, and then with the two tail ends, tie it together. One, two, you want a double knot here. And then, because I'm always trying to avoid um, sewing ends in, again, you don't need to sew your ends in with this. If you're attaching a pom-pom, you can then thread your yarn onto your darning needle and go back through the pom-pom and then just trim it off at the pom-pom. So then you don't have to sew it into the crochet. So yeah, there's that one. So next I'm going to go ahead and um, sew my ends in of this rainbow and I'm going to finish it off with these kinds of tassels going all the way along so I'm going to alternate white and rainbow, white and rainbow. So each strap, um, strap, strip of the rainbow has got the same colour tassel coming from it. So yeah. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you've enjoyed a little bit of rainbow crochet therapy this morning um and if anyone's stuck with it then don't stress just ask for help um so this week I set up the um raise room crocheters online group for anyone who is following along with these tutorials um you can kind of ask for help on there. So post whatever you're making, inspire each other, you know, share. Um, but also if you're stuck with something, you can take a picture of it and pop it on there. And then myself or one of the other lovely members will um, will give you a hand with it. Um, so as I say, I'm gonna share this, um, I'm gonna save this video now and it will be on this um, event link for the rest of the day. And then a bit later on, it will also be on the YouTube channel as well. So for anybody who wants to go back and watch it, in a moment it will be available straight away from where you are watching it live. Um, but later on, um, we will um, you'll find it on the YouTube channel as well. Oh, well done, Annalise, managing to keep up today. That's awesome. So all this practice is just going to mean that the more you do it, the more you're able to just enjoy it. Um, and yeah, it's brilliant. It's so it's been so much fun to crochet along with you guys again this morning. As I say, let me know if you need any help with anything on the Raise Room Crocheters online um, Facebook group. And um, the Raise Room um, YouTube channel is just called Raise Room. Please go along, subscribe, like the videos that you watch, share them with your friends. Um, and yeah, anything that you make that you want to share on social media publicly and let everybody know about make sure you tag me so that I can see it too thanks so much guys enjoy the rest of your Sunday stay safe stay at home and um yeah keep talking keep sharing and we'll get through it we'll be we'll be at the other end before we know it guys bye <laughs>